Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Hello and good morning. I want to welcome you to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name is Julianne Harris and we are so delighted that you've tuned in this morning. And so let me go over our announcements and we'll jump right into the Word. So this is an interactive Bible study. We want you to interact with us. How you can do that is in whatever forum you are watching, we want you to go down to the chat section and start typing in your questions as you hear Barry share this morning. Then the last 10 to 15 minutes of the program, we're gonna to get to as many of your questions as we possibly can. In order for you to interact with us, you need to know our schedule. So on Mondays and Fridays, we have Bible study at 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays is at 6 p.m., and Wednesday morning is at 7 a.m., and that is all Mountain Time. So please calculate that out and tune in while we are live. You can also interact with us by becoming a partner of this amazing ministry. I'm telling you what, we are seeing lives transformed all over the world, and you can be a part of it simply by giving. So you can go to awmi.net slash give or give us a call at 719. 719- Nine six three five one 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 one. And um, also at that phone number, we have prayer ministers available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So no matter what time you're watching this Bible study, if you're going through something, if you want um, instruction in the word, direction into the word, or maybe some supplemental teaching on a certain subject, don't hesitate to give our prayer ministers a call at 719-635-1111. And last but not least, I always like to mention that we um, are open. Fall enrollment is open, and it starts in about three weeks here on the main campus and at our extension locations in the U.S. So I would encourage you, if you have an inkling to come to Karis Bible College, that is a God-given um, a God-given desire. So please go to charisbiblecollege.org and check us out. So uh, without further ado, I get to introduce Barry Bennett, who is our speaker today. And his official title for the ministry is Senior Instructor. Uh, he's an amazing man of the word. He was my favorite instructor when I was in school. And so Barry, we are ready for what you're sharing. Julianne, hi. Hi, Barry. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't been here in a while. I haven't either. And, uh, so we're both feeling kind of the so, same. But I'm back alive and well and all is good. And uh, I got to, got to do a vacation and other things. And so uh, anyway, awesome. it's good to be back. Yeah. Well, welcome back. Amen. So uh, good to be with you all. And man, I want to... Uh, be an encouragement for you today. I uh, really, that, that's just my heart that I just want to share something. This isn't really a, a formal Bible study as much as it's just going to be me sharing my heart with you and hopefully encouraging you in your walk with God. Uh, you know, in the very beginning in, in the Garden of Eden, the intention of God was to walk and talk with Adam and Eve. I don't know that that took place at all because they sinned right away, but uh, that was his heart to walk and talk with them. And that's still God's heart today, is to have that kind of relationship, fellowship, communion with us uh, that kind of breaks through all of the bondages of religion and all of the fears that people have. And I know I talk a lot about the goodness of God. Uh, it's something that has just been so impressed upon me, especially in the last three years, just how good God is. And that has really done more for my faith than studying the subject of faith. And I've said that many times, but... Uh, when I got a deeper revelation on the goodness of God, my faith grew. Uh, I know we have the faith of God, but sometimes we don't access it. So let me say it this way. Understanding the goodness of God helped me to access my faith more than ever before. It just made it alive, more alive, more uh, powerful in my life. So what I want to do is go through some scriptures with you. I often talk about how I go in into the Word and, and I see s different things about the goodness of God and I'll copy and paste over in my iPad and then I'll read through those verses. And what I do is I take time to see myself. And I think the last Bible study I did actually about a month ago was called Take Time to See. And so I want to go into that with how do I see? What do I see? I find that so many of us are so busy and we all have so many activities and so many responsibilities and so many challenges that we don't take time to see what God wants us to see. And when we're not seeing with our spiritual eyes, when we're not projecting the future, when we're not 
creating the future in a sense with our divine imagination when we're not seeing it, uh, we're missing out and we're going to end up living as slaves to the world system that, that we're in. And I don't want to live that way. And so I do, I, and I've said before, the most important part of my day is the time I take to see this day and tomorrow and project into the future. And I, I see the blessings of God. So where do I get those things? What am I trying to see? And so that's what I want to do with you is go through some verses that I use. These are just a few verses I use to see the blessing of God, the goodness of God in my life. So I hope that makes sense. So let's just get started and hopefully it'll make more sense as we go. Let's start in Psalm 23, Psalm 23, 6. The whole Psalm is powerful. I mean, if you can understand and get a revelation of Psalm 23 on a personal level, you're, you're good to go. But let's just go to verse 6. It says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, we're going to modify that right off the bat. It's not that we're dwelling in His house. He's dwelling in us. We are the, the house now. God lives in us. But it says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. So I take time to see myself walking in the presence of God. I might be walking on a beach or walking through a beautiful forest or in somewhere in nature, and I just see His goodness follow me, His mercy all around me. I take time to see that. Now, when it says goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, what it doesn't say is guilt and condemnation will follow me all the days of my life. Amen. And I see a lot of Christians are living in that, that realm of trying to deal with the past, forget the past, hope nobody finds out about the past, feeling guilty, feeling unworthy, will God ever love me? And these are the kinds of things that if you get the revelation of His goodness, those things fall off of your life. You're not worried. We all have past. We all have things that we wish we hadn't done. But I don't live there. I walk in the, in, in, with the things of God, and I walk on His paths, and goodness and mercy are with Him. Uh, God wants to walk and talk with me. He knows that we are flesh. He knows we've messed up. But His goodness and mercy aren't variable as to what I do. They're variable as to His, they're not variable because of His nature, of who He is. His goodness, His mercy are permanent aspects of my life. And I walk in, the, in that reality. And I have to think about that every day. Because sometimes I get challenged just like anybody else. Not sometimes, every day I get challenged just like everybody else. But I have to stop and think, no, goodness and mercy are still here. They follow me all the days of my life. Every minute of my life, the goodness of God is in my life. Amen. Amen. So let's go on to another one. Psalm 5, verse 12. Psalm 5, verse 12 says, For you, O Lord, for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as with a shield. Mm. All right, let's break it down. Let's move it into the new covenant. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. If you're born again, you're the righteousness of God in Christ. God blesses the righteous. The first blessing is that you've been made righteous. Praise God. Amen. There's no more guilt and condemnation, as we just mentioned. It says, with favor, with favor you will surround him as with the shield. So I make these things personal. Thank you, Father, that today not only are blessing and mercy following me, but you are surrounding me with your favor. There is a buffer of favor around me. And, as, and it's not a pride thing. It's not an ego thing. It's a humility thing because I don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. But God knows that. Amen. But He does it anyway. That's the grace of God. And He surrounds us with favor. So I take time to see that. I see blessings and mercy and favor surrounding me because He has given me the gift of righteousness. And so that is just my inheritance. That's your inheritance. But if you don't take time to see it, to appreciate it, and to give thanks for it, you may not get the benefit of it because you're not conscious of it. I try to be conscious. No, everywhere I go, I have favor. And you would be amazed uh, at how many doors open for me, we'll say in, in a symbolic sense, of how many good things happen uh, just by the favor of God. We just got back from a vacation and we got to the ho hotel and, oh, Mr. Bennett, uh, we've given you an upgrade. They don't know who I am. I don't know who they are. I've never done business with this hotel before in my life. Somehow I got an upgrade. We got a much nicer room for nothing. 
Uh, I, I don't know why to this day, but I'll take it. And I expect things like that. I expect favor. It's not that I am, uh, we were using the word earlier, prima donna. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not one. Oh, we were using? <laughs> uh, I was, but I'm not one. But uh, I just, I, I expect God is with me Amen. all the time. And it's, it's, it's fun because I'm walking and talking with God Amen. all the time. I expect his favor. I expect blessings and mercy. So let's go on. It, it, I have so much to share. Psalm 112, one of my favorites. Psalm 112, verses 1 through 4. Pra uh, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. Well, I'll change that. Who de we delight in his new covenant. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house. And, the, and his righteousness endures forever. Mm. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. And I mean, we could do, I could do hours on that, on these few verses here. But blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Well, I, it's not a terrifying fear of the Lord, but man, I love God. I honor God. I want to walk with God. I want to know God more and more and more. Uh, I, I treasure that. I value my relationship with God. You will spend time with what you value. Mm. So where, where are you spending your time? And that will tell you what you truly value. So it goes on. Uh, his descendants, my children are blessed. I have three blessed children. But I expect that because I have favor. There is blessing on my life which extends to my children and now to my grandchildren. I expect that. I think about that. I keep that in the forefront of my mind. We are blessed. We are blessed because we are in covenant with God. And he goes on to say, wealth and riches will be in his house. That took me a long time to get that breakthrough, uh, being a missionary and very, a very poor missionary for a long, long time. Uh, I went through that season of life and it took a while because I thought missionaries or should be poor. That's you know just part of the job description. If you're a missionary, you're poor. That was my mindset. It was so wrong, but that limited us. And I've moved into the prosperity of God, the prosperity of knowing blessings and mercy, the prosperity of having favor, the prosperity of walking with God in His new covenant. Uh, wealth and riches are in my house. Wealth and riches are in me. I am blessed. You are blessed. Now, the same wealth and riches that are in me are in you if you believe it. And if you begin to expect that in your life. I'm not talking about your bank account, though eventually it'll get there too. But wealth and riches are the, the grace that we have with God, the peace we have with God, the joy of the Lord, all of the fruit of the Spirit that we can walk in love. We're free from guilt and condemnation. That's prosperity. All of those things are prosperity. The fact that you can believe and receive healing in your body, that's prosperity. That your relationships are doing well, that's prosperity. And so wealth and riches are in my house and in my physical life, we continually get more and more blessed. Everything that has the life of God associated with it should grow. Mm. There should be multiplication because God doesn't, doesn't die. <laughs> Nothing God touches dies. Everything God touches comes to life or reproduces and multiplies. So in our own lives, we should see multiplication of the grace of God and of the, of the sufficiency for whatever you need with generosity. You should be able to do your purpose in life uh, easily and with generosity because wealth and riches are in your house, figuratively and literally in your house. That's, that's what you should see. You should project it. I project things that I might not have the money in the bank for right now, but I know. I, this, it's God's will. It will be, it will be there. And I, I project that because wealth and riches are in my house, and I take time to see that. Amen. Amen. All right. It's, it goes on to say, uh, your righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. I expect God to lead, lead me and to show me the way. I don't expect to be confused. So many Christians are confused. I don't know what to do. What's the will of God for my life? If you're walking in these things, if you're walking in His righteousness and you're expecting mercy and, and goodness and favor and wealth and riches, you should have the light of God to lead you. You shouldn't be confused. Christians should be the least confused people on the earth. Mm. Sadly, I see many confused Christians. Amen. They're not walking in their inheritance. They're not walking in the blessing. 
But if you'll take time, I take time. Now, sometimes it's a, I'll take an hour, and when I get home in, in the afternoon, I'll sit in my chair and open my Bible and, and listen to the Lord and take time to see the blessings of God on my life. Other times, it's throughout the day. I'll take a minute here, a minute there, a minute there, and I'll just see the blessings of God in my life. This is just a routine for me, and this is why I think I'm walking in a different level of blessing than I ever have before. All right? Uh, goes on, you know, gracious, full of compassion, and righteous. So I won't take time for all of that. Let's, let's move on to another one. Let's go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5, very well known. These are all God's greatest hits that I'm reading. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I like that. All right. So bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen. First of all, are you thankful? Man, that's, that's such a key to moving into the blessings of God, the favor of God. Are you thankful or are you always complaining? Which language do you speak? The language of the kingdom, of thankfulness and blessing, or the language of the darkness, complaining and criticism and gossip? Which language are you speaking? Okay, so bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. How deep does that thankfulness go? Bless his holy name, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, plural, <laughs> plural, who forgives all your iniquities, praise God, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction. We're looking at his benefits. What are his benefits? He forgives everything, number one. He heals your diseases, number two. He redeems your life from destruction, number three. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Goodness and mercy are following you. Amen. Number uh, verse 5 says, who satisfies your mouth with good things. He even gives you a new language, the language of the Spirit, to pray and to bless Him with. Praise God, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And I claim that too. Praise God. Uh, so many things, all these benefits in here. So I take time to see each one of them. I take time to see all of my sins are forgiven when Jesus hung on the cross and shed his blood for me. I hadn't even been born yet, but all of my sins were being forgiven. Praise God. And I receive that gift, that grace. I receive that mercy. And then it says he heals all my diseases. Man, I have been there and done that. Uh, being told three years ago that I was going to die uh, and now my youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise God. I am healthier than ever Amen. and enjoying life more than ever because I walk and talk with God. And I took time while I was very, very sick. I took time to see myself very, very well. I took time to plan the future. I took time to see myself teaching, doing live Bible studies, teaching at Karis, having a big Christmas with my family. I took time to see a vacation. I took time to plan I take time to project these promises. I don't just read them and say, well, that's nice. That's probably for someone else. That can't possibly be for me. That's how many Christians approach this. They don't believe this is real. I believe it's real. I believe that he, he's blessing me. He's healing me. He's redeemed my life from destruction. Who knows how many destructive things I've missed and didn't even know they were possibly about to happen because I have favor surrounding me as a shield. And, and these things, I speak these things out of my mouth. I take time to see them. I believe my life is redeemed from destruction. I mean, the enemy tried to take me out with cancer. Uh, I'm redeemed from destruction. I am healed. He heals all my diseases. He satisfies my mouth with good things. He gives me good words to say. He gives me his language in the Bible. I can say these things that I'm talking to you about. These verses, I make them personal. Amen. I say, man, goodness and mercy are following me today. Favor is surrounding me like a shield. He's given me the gift of righteousness. He's forgiven me. There is nothing against me. Praise God. I have no guilt. I have no shame, not because of me, but because of the gift of righteousness. He has healed all my diseases. I walk in health. Praise God. And I, I just rehearse these things and I'll take time to imagine them, <laughs> to see them. And that's what makes it real. I, I choose to walk in the blessings of God. Praise God. Uh, who crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. I'll take that one too. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I just, I feel like you have as much as you want. 
If you feel like you're lacking in the things I'm talking about, it's because you haven't pursued them. Perhaps you haven't even believed them. But it's time to believe in the goodness of God. It's time to believe what he wants to do. What most religion will do is tell you how unworthy you are, how much you've messed up, that this is a sin and that is a sin and you'll never recover. And you just got to hang in there. And God is trying to, to beat you up to make you... Uh, somebody wrote me recently and said that the church they were in made them feel like because Jesus suffered, you had to suffer too to say thank you. And the whole Christian life was about suffering. I'm thinking, where do these things come from? Didn't Jesus say, I have come that they might have life and might have it more abundantly? He didn't say, I've come that they might have suffering and more abundantly to pay me back for what I did. And yet some people teach that. No, God is a good God. Praise the Lord. We are so blessed. And we should expect, we're about, we're starting our Healing is Here conference tomorrow. And thousands of people are going to be here, and we're going to see thousands of people healed. Amen. We're going to see a move of God. We're going to see people set free. That's why we do this conference, because people are looking for health and healing. And they're looking to have the chains broken off. And so, so much religion tells people, no, God is using sickness to teach you something. No. No, God uses His Word and His Spirit to teach you. He doesn't need sickness. It's like saying God uses sin to perfect you. God doesn't use sin or sickness to perfect you. Amen. God is a good God. God wants you well. God wants you strong. God wants you full of His joy mm -hmm. in His presence. I think I have that one coming up. His fullness of joy. Well, you should be happy. You should be the happiest person in your family. Amen. You should be full of joy and expectation and positivity and faith. That should be alive in you all the time. And say, well, Barry, you don't know what I'm going through. Well, you don't know what I've gone through. I mean, I've shared some of my tests. I don't share the whole thing. Of, I was close to death. Uh, I've been through that. I've been through other things in life. I've made mistakes. But that doesn't mean I have to, well, I have to chunk joy and get rid of happiness and peace because I messed up. No, they're in there. God lives in you. God lives in me. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. You can walk in the joy of the Lord if you want to. And I'll tell you what, the more you choose that, the more power you'll have in prayer. The more power you'll have and influence you'll have over your family or over wherever you work or whatever you do. People can't fight against the presence of God in your life. They might not like it, but a lot of people need it. They need to see you have the victory. They need to see you walking in blessings. They need to be asking, why do you seem to have favor all the time? Why does everything go your way? And that's when you can glorify God and give a testimony. That's, that's what our Christian life should be about. It shouldn't be about religious dogma and suffering and everything is going wrong and just hang in there. And people are living by fate, F-A-T-E, and they're calling it faith. It's not faith to live by fate. Anybody can live by fate. Most people do. But believers live by faith. We live by faith in the goodness of God. I think that's what I called this Bible study today is faith in His goodness. Amen. Goodness will change your life. The goodness of God will change your life. Okay, let's go on. Uh, Psalm 34, verse 8. Psalm 34, verse 8 says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in Him. I did a Bible study called this, I think, Taste, Taste and See the Lord is Good. Didn't I do that one? Uh, maybe a year and a half ago. You can go back and look for it. Taste and See that the Lord is Good. If it wasn't that one, it was something else coming up here. <laughs> but anyway, I, I, this is a recurring theme for me, and it will continue to be, just on how good God is. But it says, Taste and See that the Lord is Good. Blessed is the man or woman who trusts in Him. And do you trust in Him? Well, let's find out. Are you blessed? Well, no, Brother Barry, I'm not because of this and because of that. You're not trusting in Him. If the first thing you talk about are your challenges, the first thing you talk about are you, your sicknesses, the first thing you talk about is your lack of resources, if that's what's always coming out of your heart, you're not trusting in Him. Now, that may sound harsh, but look, why don't we have a wake-up call here Amen. and call it what it is, Blessed is the man or woman that trusts in Him. I'm going to go with that one. I have challenges. I'm going through challenges right now. I am blessed. 
I will be, I am blessed, I have favor, I have goodness and mercy, I have wealth and riches, I have whatever I need to navigate these situations, and you do too. But I know it and I say it, maybe you don't. I believe it and I say it, I trust in, fa in, the, in the Father. He is my source. God has become my source in everything. I, am, I have learned, I have trained myself to stay in peace. And when the challenge comes up, I'm not going to get ruffled. I am not going to freak out. I am going to the Father. Thank you, Father. This, this is unexpected, but I know we have the resources. I know we have the peace. I know we have the joy. We're going to come through this. You redeem my life from destruction. Amen. I hope this is making an impact in you. But these are things I do all the time. I don't just do this once a year. This is my daily routine to go through these things and to remember, to stir myself up, to remember, and to remember to put my trust back in the things of God. What happens is, it says in the parable of the sower, the cares of this world choke the word. The cares of this world, I'm gonna add some things here. They choke your joy. They choke your peace. They choke anything that God wants to do in you and through you if you give more attention to the cares of the world than you do to the promises of God that I'm reading to you right here, then you're not going to live what I'm sharing with you. You've chosen your Lord. Your Lord is the cares of the world. Mm -hmm. hmm. My Lord is God. And I'm not uh, trying to understand the context in which I'm saying it. But if you say God is, is your Lord, He's your Father, He's your Redeemer, then believe it. Amen. Act like it. Declare it, walk in it, see it. What's your tomorrow look like? What's the rest of today look like? Well, you know, I've got this. No, you're already in the wrong spot. The rest of your today and your tomorrow should look like blessings. Even if you're in a hospital bed, which I was, you can still say, I'm going to be better tomorrow. I'm going to be better this afternoon. Something that I couldn't do this morning, I'll do this afternoon. If it's only lift one finger, I'll lift it. If it's get out of bed, I'll get out of bed. Tomorrow is going to be better than today, and the next day will be better. I will have more prosperity, at least in my spirit, tomorrow than I do today. It's going to find its way to my bank account Amen. because I am blessed. He is, he is enriching me in all things. It's also in, in Psalm 112. Uh, you've got to see these things. You've got to choose these things. You've got to make up your mind. I am done walking in the cares of the world. I am going to start walking in the blessing of God. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go on. Can we do some more? Yes. Okay, Psalm 34.10, just a couple verses later. Psalm 34.10 says, The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Jesus said this, Seek first His kingdom, and all these things shall be added to you. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm back next Monday, and I'm thinking I might do another round of this from the New Testament. Yeah. I'm using Old Testament stuff today. Uh, maybe I'll move into the new next week, but it's all the same thing. All right, let me say it again. Those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Are you lacking? Or do you think you're lacking? You have all of His peace that there is, but you may not be using it. You have all His joy there is. You may not be using it, choosing it. You have all the love there is. You've gotten, the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart. You can't get more. You just need to choose more. You shall not lack any good thing. And man, I, I, I choose to see this. Uh, unexpected expenses come up. Okay, going to pay it, and I'm going to rejoice, and I don't lack any good thing. I just choose to live this way. And the more I choose to live this way, the crazier happy I get, <laughs> the more blessed I get, the more joy comes out because I'm getting free from the bondage, the slavery to the cares of the world. I'm getting freer and freer and freer, and you can too. Uh, it's, I can't over-describe this, it's, this is over-emphasize it. It's just the best way to live is to live in fellowship with God who's for you. He's not against you. He knows what you've done. He knew it before you did it. He still loves you. Amen. He still has given you His righteousness. He's given you His promises. They're all yes and amen. He's given you his life. He wants to bless you with 
goodness and mercy follow you. Favor surrounds you. He's given you his righteousness. He heals your diseases. He's forgiven you. All of these things that we're saying, he, seeing here and saying he, he's redeemed your life from the pit and from destruction. This is reality. This isn't just fairy tale Bible stories. This is reality. But you've got to believe it and you've got to see it. Amen. And you'll know you're believing it when you start to see it. And I'm talking about in your heart, in your mind's eye, in your spirit, however you want to describe that. You'll know you're really believing it when you start to see it. And then you'll start to say it. Praise God. And that's where the changes start taking place. Let's go on. Psalm 37, 3 and 4. Psalm 37, 3 and 4. And I think this is the verse that that Bible study came from that I talked about a minute ago. I'll, I'll get it right here in a second. <laughs> it says, uh, Psalm 37, 3 and 4, trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land. And this is the title of the Bible study and feed on his faithfulness. That's the one I did about a year and a half ago. Feed on his faithfulness, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Praise God. Amen. This, this is so good. I saw something last night on Facebook, a quote I'd never seen before. And then I looked it up today and I've seen it now a lot <laughs> and it, it, a little bit changes, but it says God's will for your life is not a tightrope. And the quote I saw, it's a, it's a large field, a pasture or a meadow, or you could say it's, it's a playground or the people are always on this tightrope of, if I make a mistake, I fall and God's not happy with me. I've screwed up. That's not the will of God. The will of God for you is to have abundant life, to walk in his love, to love other people. You can have the desires of your heart. It says, he shall give you the desires of your heart. And a lot of people, theologians especially, shy away from that. No, it's got to be, it's got to be God. God lives in you. It is God. Where else would the desire come from? We're not talking about carnal things. We're talking about life. We're talking about joy. That's God's will. Peace. That's God's will. Love. That's God's will. Health. That's God's will. Being a blessing to people. That's God's will. And there are so many different ways to express that because it's not a tightrope. It's a, it's a meadow. It's a beach, whatever you like. It's wide open for you to explore. I mean, when we get to heaven, we're not going to have to walk on a little tiny path and don't touch this and don't touch that. And don't you know God made this? Don't touch it. No, it's for us to enjoy. Amen. You can run through wherever's up there and, and, and have a, the time of your life. You can do that now in the things of God if you're walking and talking with him and understanding he's for you. He's not against you. Amen. Oh, this this blesses me. This this is the way we should be living. I need to finish up here, but I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Psalm 1611. I'm going to do two more real quick. Psalm 1611. You will show me the path of life. Mm. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Mm. In your presence is fullness of joy. When we are in the presence of God, and you could say, well, in prayer time, for example, prayer should be the most happy thing, the most joyful thing you do Amen. because the source, God, the father is for you wanting to bless you. Amen. And the people that you're praying for, God loves them more than you do. And he's using your faith and your love to move through you to touch them. Prayer should be all about the joy of the Lord in his presence, his fullness of joy. Man, it says, uh, at his right hand, are forevermore. Now the religious mind says, well, I don't even know what that's talking about. I don't want to think about pleasures. We're religious. <laughs> <laughs> no, not me. I want the pleasures Amen. at his right hand or pleasure. I mean, I want to enjoy life. I know the world is falling apart, but I don't have to fall apart. You don't have to fall apart. You don't have to submit to the cares of the world. Amen. If I'm in a North Korean prison camp, which is about probably the worst place you could be on this earth, mm. uh, I'll still have the joy of the Lord until they dispatch me, but I'm still going to have peace and love and joy and, and smile at the guards, whatever. I, the, my wealth is inside of me. Amen. It's not my circumstances. It's what's in me. And there are pleasures in me that I, you can't get to. They're mine. And you can't steal them with tragedies and, and disasters. I, I can still choose to walk in the pleasures of God. All right, one more verse, Psalm 27, 13. Mm -hmm. Psalm 27, 13. These are all verses I go over frequently, almost daily. And I just take time to see myself enjoying these blessings. Psalm 27, 13 says, 
I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Well, I'm not going to lose heart because I have seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You don't have to lose heart. Amen. Choose to see his goodness. Quit letting the cares of the world dictate your day and your life Amen. and choose to see the goodness of God. Choose to walk in the blessings of God. Goodness and mercy are following you. Favor surrounds you. You think, well, favor doesn't surround me. That's why. It's your attitude. Mm. But change your attitude and believe what the Word says. His favor surrounds you as a shield. He's forgiven all of your iniquities. He's healed all your diseases. He's redeemed your life from destruction. He fills your mouth with good things. Mm. He renews your youth like the evil. There are pleasures at His right hand. He shows you the path of life. You shouldn't be confused and depressed. You should be the happiest person on this earth. You could be. You should be. That joy is in you. Take time to see these things and start walking in them and start declaring them with your mouth. Your life will change and people will come up to you and they'll say, what happened to you? Man, let me tell you, God is good. Amen. I'll stop there. Oh my goodness. That's so good. So good. And we have so many questions, so please continue to submit them. So uh, Praveen on YouTube says, how can we assure our heart when we've had past defeats in prayer and the enemy brings a picture of that whenever we are believing God for something? I don't spend two seconds thinking about what the enemy has done. Uh, sometimes we don't know the will of God enough to pray accurately. We don't, we don't understand God's heart and we're praying out of fear or we're praying out of uh, strife or we're praying out of, I sure hope this works. There's not a real faith involved in this. There's not a real joy. Make sure that when you pray, you're, you're praying from a place of joy and a place of victory. Get the victory before you go to prayer. Don't try to get the victory in prayer. In other words, where are you seated? You're seated with him in heavenly places. Are all of his promises yes and amen? I believe they are. Amen. So you already have the victory, but you've got to see the victory before you pray. And then you sow your prayer, you, you sow the word, you declare the word, and then by faith and patience, you inherit the promises. So don't, if you've had past defeats, we've all had past defeats. That's not going to stop my future unless you let it. Don't let your past stop your future. Learn, grow. I've been through poverty I didn't have to go through. I've been through sickness I probably didn't have to go through. But I'm learning and I'm growing and I don't keep living in the past. I li I'm living right now and in the future. Amen. Amen. That's so good. So, Lara, that answered your question as well, um, dealing with these uh, imaginations of past failures. So that's really good. It's um, a waste of time. Don't don't go there. That's the enemy wanting to keep you trapped in your past. Don't don't go there. Amen. Today amen. is a new day. It says his mercies are new every morning. Live in that. Move on. Amen. amen. So good. Uh, Mavis on YouTube says, I've been walking with the Lord by faith for four, year now, four years now. I seem to know who God is and instantly get results in whatever I'm asking for, but not healing. What should I do? Well, you're judging it by your symptoms. You're already healed. By his stripes, you were healed. By his stripes, I was healed. I'm not going to judge that by my symptoms or what the doctor says. I'm going to stand on the word. I am healed. Now, my body needs to come into agreement. Amen. So, but you got to get your spirit in agreement first with the word of God. Do you believe that by his stripes you were healed? Not mentally, that's fine, but in your heart. Do you believe this in your heart? Once you believe this, then the symptoms begin to diminish because you have taken authority in your spirit. I am healed. By his stripes I was healed. Now, this took me a year with the cancer battle. Nonetheless, I'm here. I'm over two years now, free from that because I saw it in my spirit first. Once you see it in your spirit, your body is going to have to submit to that. Sometimes it's a very quick process. Sometimes it might be a longer process. But if you remain firm in your spirit, that by his stripes, I was healed, I am healed, your body is going to have to submit to your dominant belief. Amen. If you don't believe it, your body doesn't have to submit to it. There's more, much more there. Watch the healing conference this week. You'll get a lot of great teaching. Amen. Yes, definitely. So Samaya on YouTube says, I often hear that God waits for the perfect timing to give a blessing. Sometimes it can seem like a blessing came quickly when others take forever. So are the blessings of God based on a time frame? In, in one sense, yes. In the sense you're talking about, no, God's not waiting. Everything is yes and amen. Everything is good to go. But the kingdom works on the seed principle. 
seed time and harvest. Mm -hmm. And so the timing of God, when people say, well, I don't know what the timing of God is. It's the time between the planting and the reaping. Some seed time and harvest are called miracles. It's still the seed of the word did the work, but the harvest was immediate. That's a miracle. Other times it's quick. Other times it's longer. Other times it's a process. By faith and patience, we inherit the promises. But the farmer knows when he puts his seed in the ground, he's going to have a crop. He's going to have a harvest. Some things grow in two weeks. Some things grow in two months. Some things grow in four months. It's the same thing. So there's, there's timing associated with everything in the kingdom because the kingdom is a seed kingdom. But you keep sowing. You keep giving thanks. You keep blessing. You keep expecting. And whatever you're believing for will come. Amen. Amen. That's so good. Uh, Jennifer on YouTube says, I believe Jesus with all my heart and his finished work of defeating the devil on the cross. But how does the devil still have the power to influence our thoughts? Uh, words. I'll, I'll probably speak on this tomorrow. I'm speaking tomorrow night at the healing conference. You might want to watch that. But words are the fiery darts. You can't have a thought that you haven't heard from something somewhere at some time in your life. And we have a a huge memory bank, unfortunately. <laughs> we remember way too much. But uh, words are what plant the seeds of doubt and unbelief or frustration or guilt or whatever. And so that's how the enemy comes in. He, he doesn't come as a big apparition. He comes through people or the news or the doctor or whatever. Words are spoken, and that's what gives you thoughts that, tint, that begin to lead you toward unbelief. That's why it's so important, uh, these verses I gave you, and there are many, 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 many more in the Old Testament and the Psalms and what have you. Uh, find them and let these words be sown into your heart. Not the words of the world, not the words of the enemy. Let the word of God be sown in your heart, and that's where the change will take place. And there's much more that we could say about that, but that's the, that's the place to start. So good. Uh, Sarah on YouTube says, confessing the word, calling it to be, but not having heard a specific word from God, can we claim it? Would it be incorrect to end it in Jesus' name, or is this using his name in vain? Well, I, uh, don't get so scientific here. <laughs> uh, speak the word, believe the word, and at some point as you're doing that, it will get quickened to you. I've done this for years. Many things that I believed and declared and all of that, they weren't real to me, but I kept doing it because I'd rather repeat that word, the word of God, than repeat the devil's words. Amen. Amen. Eventually, at some point, they get quickened to me. And when they get quickened to me, that's when my faith comes alive, vision comes alive, everything comes alive, and I move into that new, that new realm. But yeah, uh, feed yourself on the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. If it's in the word of God, it proceeded from the mouth of God. Get it into your heart. At some point, it'll get quickened. And uh, that's when it will propel you into a realm of faith. Okay. So, Lara has another great question. These are the verses that God has given, has been drawing me to as well this past week. But how can I feel so in tune with God's word on one day and then so far off the next day? Well, you let something else come in and take, take root. Uh, this is a daily thing. It's called the shield of faith. Shield of faith, fiery darts, Ephesians chapter 6. And so we've got to refresh ourselves. I do. I have to do this. And I'm teaching this Bible study, but I have to do this myself. I have to refresh myself daily in these things, or I can begin to drift because I have things in my life, challenges and what have you. So I've got to stay on top of this all the time. We have a very technological world in which we are exposed to so many voices at the same time. You can spend a whole day wasting time on technology and listening to stuff and entertainment and what have you. And I'm not saying any of that is bad in the, in the, in the sense in one sense, but it's bad in this sense is that it is keeping you from hearing God. Mm. I'll probably talk about this tomorrow night. <laughs> so uh, this is why so many people are not receiving the things of God. They're not giving time for his word to be conceived in their hearts. They're listening to too many other voices. So. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, we got time for one more. Okay. Vanessa on chat says, I agree with you that Christians should be the least confused people on the earth. What steps can we take to overcome confusion when it arises? Go to God. Amen. Go to the Father. Go to the Word. Say, Father, show me your wisdom. I have, you have been made unto me wisdom. That's a verse. Uh, 1 Corinthians, I think, 1.30. He's been made unto you wisdom. Ask for wisdom. James chapter 1. Ask for wisdom. Amen. 
Father, I need your wisdom in this situation. I know you've been made unto me wisdom, and so I'm going to read the word, and I expect you to speak to me. Do you expect to hear from God? Do you expect him to show you things? A little seed of something, a little inspiration, a light bulb moment, a verse jumps off the page. Expect the wisdom of God. Uh, your, with your brain or with my brain, I can't figure anything out. But with God's mind, I can because the Spirit of God is going to lead me into all truth. So just expect it. Amen. Amen. Man, that's so good. And we've come down to an end of our time together. So thank you all for submitting so many awesome questions. And don't forget, if your question didn't get answered, we do a Q&A roundup on Tuesday afternoons. And I, so will, I will be back tomorrow to do you that. You will. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So Barry will be back doing that. So uh, always watch that. And it, they're powerful. I watch them. And all the different questions and getting answers for that is amazing. Also, uh, don't forget we have Healing is Here starting tomorrow. For more information on that, listen, it is not too late for you to come. So go to awmi.net slash events. And you can see all the amazing speakers. It's going to start tomorrow morning and it ends on Saturday around, well, the last service the Saturday at one. Yeah. And so you won't want to miss it. So come out here, be in person. Um, we have so many amazing speakers. So check that out. Also, don't forget KarisBibleCollege.org. And we have live Bible study tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. So make sure and tune in. So. Yeah. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. It was amazing. Uh, I think this time off, it got you all fired up again. You bet. <laughs> all right, y'all. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. The moment you believe your healing is done, and it's just a matter of time until whatever the symptoms are, are gone. You observe what Jesus did and try in your mind and say, I'm making a judgment that Jesus paid the price for me. We focus on what the doctors can do for us more than what God can do for us. Say, God is my healer, God is my healer. not the doctor. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV.